U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates is in southern Iraq today on an unannounced visit. Gates is getting a first-hand look at what the U.S. military mission in Iraq is expected to become. He's going to a U.S. command post in southern Iraq as well. The troops there are serving mainly as advisors to Iraqi forces, and it's a prototype for U.S. forces as they shift from combat to support roles. While in Iraq, Gates is also meeting with political leaders, including the prime minister. Gates is expected to visit Iraq's restive Kurdish region in the north, where challengers made a surprisingly strong showing in regional elections over this weekend. Well, President Obama's defense budget for next year includes a 13 percent cut in missile defense development. The $36 billion network of ground-based interceptor missiles is managed by Boeing, with Raytheon as one of the lead subcontractors. Meantime, though, the U.S. continues to negotiate with Russia over building a missile shield based in Eastern Europe. Lieutenant General Patrick O'Reilly is director of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency. He joins me now live from Bloomberg's Washington Bureau. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, sir, when we hear numbers like this, um, a 13 percent cut in budget, put that in perspective, because obviously the military subcontractor don't like hearing that. But from a security perspective, do these kind of cuts uh, actually, in your view, make a strategic difference in, in terms of the security of the country? Well, I think what's important is your uh, note that it is a developmental budget. Uh, we are not reducing the missile defense capability we have today and that we've built over the last uh, couple decades. Uh, that is in place and it continues to be maintained. Uh, the new administration is looking at policies, and Congress, and Congress is asking them to, on where to go in the future. So there are some programs that uh, we have uh, either terminated or put on hold because they don't address uh, the threats that we are currently looking at, which is primarily medium and short-range threats. But we're not doing any of this at the uh, expense of our missile defense capability we have today and we will continue to maintain that. Right, because in the uh, mainstream press, as you well know, there has been concern raised about North Korea, also Iran, other uh, countries that could potentially uh, have missile systems, could potentially be uh, hostile to the United States. Um, but in your view, th this uh, cut has nothing to do in terms of uh, lessening uh, the defense system of this country. No, not our defense system we have today. There is no reduction in that. Uh, what there is a discussion on is what are we building for the future? And 99% of our threat today to our deployed forces and our allies and friends are medium and short-range missiles. And that is where the administration is focusing a uh, majority of our funding uh, for the next several years in order to beef up that part of our defense, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, needs that today. Now, your agency has been critical in the past of Raytheon, um, pr uh, one of the companies that uh, makes warheads, um, critical of them in regard to being as many as 50 days behind schedule on delivering um, some missile warheads in the past. Is there a, a, com a potential threat here to Raytheon's uh, contract? Uh, well, uh this is a very difficult business uh, as far as managing the thousands of suppliers uh, that are required to give us parts and to integrate those parts. And Raytheon is just part of that larger family of uh, suppliers out there. And it reflects uh, that we have to be very careful about the aerospace business. And uh, it's not that uh, Raytheon has uh, done anything wrong themselves. Mm -hmm. It's their ability, though, to manage uh, keep all the smaller suppliers uh, uh, going and active and uh, making them viable. And uh, we have had difficulty in the past in that that has put us behind schedule and given us some quality control uh, work that has had to be, frankly, reworked uh, from Raytheon. But it is not exclusive just to Raytheon. It is more a reflection of how difficult this business is to build these interceptors that are very precisely mm -hmm. performing uh, assets and uh, managing the, uh, the overall uh, industrial base in our aerospace companies. When it comes to Boeing, there's a lot of talk about um, the U.S. and building a missile shield in Eastern Europe. Uh, would Boeing be the front runner for that contract? 
Well, the, our current plan is for uh, Boeing to build a ground-based mid-course defense in Europe. It is the proposed plan that the previous administration made. Uh, the current administration is reviewing it. Uh, they have not given me any indication, the secretary nor anyone else, uh, that we're abandoning that plan. But they are looking at other alternatives, and uh, they will report back uh, the, this administration to Congress later this year on their assessment. All right. Well, when it comes to the existing uh, missile shields and missile interceptors um, that exist, uh, specifically when you look in regard to North Korea and the potential threat there, how confident are you in the uh, existing missile interceptors uh, along the area of uh, particularly Hawaii? Well, we have a, a very uh, proven missile system in the area of uh, missiles coming out of North Korea. Uh, we, the testing we have done to date, and we have a lot of testing still left to do against all of our capability in all scenarios, but the scenarios out of North Korea, uh, we have uh, intercepted three times out of uh, Fort Greeley, Alaska, uh, that type of uh, mm -hmm. scenario of the missiles. We actually test them out of Vandenberg, but they're up at Fort Greeley. And then for Hawaii, we have multiple systems, uh, the THAAD, a theater high altitude area defense system. It's an Army mobile system. And then we have the Navy Aegis system. All right. Thank and you so much, Lieutenant. I'm sorry other. to have to cut you off here, but we have to head to break.